Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and this is part two of my most epic tournament game from 2022, possibly my most epic game ever. And if you've not seen part one of that video, I'll include a link to it in the description below. But this is part two, welcome back. We are on turn 13 in my game against Strider656. We just rolled our action dice, you can see our cards. My opponent is out of strategy cards, and this is what they have left with character cards. Aragorn and Boromir just managed to take Dale, saving the game. I'm My opponent is at nine victory points. I am at two victory points, having taken Dol Guldur. My opponent rolled no eyes, and I got uh, four attacks. So... Here we go. What do they start with? They start with army movement and they come to take Moria. And then I pass. They play Black Captain Commands and come take Lorien. Maybe I should have gotten Gandalf in there to help hold Lorien. Uh, obviously, it's hard for me to know exactly what I should have left there earlier in the game. I decided to leave three in a leader. I obviously wanted to be able to hold it if I could. The elven pool is completely empty. So, and I needed the units that came all the way from Rohan, both to defend Lorien, take Dol Guldur, and then go and retake Dale. So, okay, Lorien falls under siege. The Fellowship is confused about what's going on in Lorien. And then my opponent attacks Lorien. And... Maybe, it, I think it makes sense to come after Lorien. It's hard to know exactly what to do. I mean, I guess they could have gone over to Dol Guldur, given that I'm not that close to winning the game. But I think if I get some companions into Dol Guldur, and then I also take Far Harad and Angmar, there are some, um, they might, it's possible that they could give give me the game. So, you know, I, I don't know. I guess they'd probably be able to get Dol Guldur. They had, they had a good number of attacks. But it makes sense to me. They're trying to win the game. If they take, if they take um, Lorien, that'll put them up to 11. And then they can also come and take Pilar gear. That'll put them up to 12. So, okay. So they, uh, and they have Balrog. So this makes, I think this makes Lorien quite feasible. They play Balrog, they get two hits. I'm down to a single unit. They get one hit on their leadership reroll, and I get one hit to that army. So they managed to take it in a single die. They're now at 11, let we put it at 12, but they're at 11 victory points. Um, my opponent accidentally drew me a character card, but they should draw for the Witch King, so they do. And... <clears throat> Now I have to figure out what to do. So, clearly, I need to retake Erebor or Woodland Realm while also holding Dale, while also holding Pilar gear. So, this is going to be this is going to be a very tricky turn. I have one ring left. I have um four attacks showing. So, one can be into Erebor, two to take Erebor. And I can use this Palantir to get Dane Ironfoot's guard when I besiege Erebor. So I regret that I don't have more units left over from this attack against Dol Guldur. You have to remember those two elite orcs in Dol Guldur did a really good job defending. And I guess I'm going to have to retreat this army from Umbar to Pelargir. I think I think I have considered all of that at this point in the turn because when you're when you when you're losing when you're about to lose your options get much more limited. So I, I think that's pretty clear. I'm happy to see Andril. Feels like I should be able to take Erebor pretty easily. But all right, so I muster an elite in Dale. I muster okay. I muster a regular in Dale. And, it, and a regular in Pilar gear because I want my opponent to have to use a full action die to take it. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, 
maybe an elite in Dale would be safer, but I feel quite confident that I'm going to be able to take Erebor or Woodland Realm because I have um, Andro, which is two automatic hits. All right, my opponent starts moving, and uh, what do they do? I guess they move everybody out of Dimroth, everybody out of Lorien to come defend Moria, or maybe to come take Dol Guldur, I don't know, and then units from Minas Tirith to come take Lasarnach. So they're at 11 points right now. Um, I bring only two regulars to fight in Erebor because I have Andril. And I know that I'm going to play Dane Ironfoot's guard with his Palantir. So that's my thinking. My opponent moves... Nazgul around right so they move Nazgul around to defend Erebor I think that makes sense I played Dane Ironfoot's guard outside of Erebor I don't know that I've ever done this before like it's definitely legal sometimes most of the time you'll see Shadow doing it when Shadow is besieging I don't know something like Dol Guldur if they're trying to retake Dol Guldur they can play Orcs Multiplying again or if they're besieging Minus Morgul they can play King is Revealed I, I really, very rare to see Dane Ironfoot's guard played outside of Erebor while Erebor is being besieged by free people. Um, so this is pretty cool. All right, I get my elite in Erebor and another leader. So I only have four leadership now. Maybe I should have brought another leader with me. I don't know. Uh, to have five leadership in case Andro gets canceled. So my opponent thinks about coming towards Dol Guldur but decides, okay, I'm going to take Pilar gear. And they take Pilar gear. They don't, they don't get a hit, but obviously I retreat. And now my final moves are, um, again, I, I have to attack once into Erebor. I have to move this army from Umbar to West Herondor and then attack from West Herondor into Pilar gear to retake Pilar gear. And so my opponent right now is at 12 victory points. I also don't recall a game where Shadow was at 12 victory points during the turn and then maybe the game kept going. Spoiler alert. So I attack into Erebor. I play Andril, but my opponent played words, words of Power. So I think I knew this. I'm not sure. I um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I shouldn't have really known that they had Words of Power, but it's so sad. Andril got canceled by the Lidless Eye. So this this absolutely works. My opponent cancels Aragorn's power, uh, Aragorn's uh, ability and um, leadership, and then I cannot forfeit uh, Aragorn's leadership because it's already it's already lost from Words of Power. So this completely cancels Andril, which is just a beautiful card play by my opponent. Maybe I should have waited and waited till round two. Um, I don't know. I I think they probably would have not played a card. I, I don't know. They probably still would have played it. Okay, so I have to just roll two sixes. Now I have uh, a few chances to roll two sixes. Just got to do it the hard way. And um, I get one hit, and then my opponent gets no hits. I press with that dwarf, and then I get one hit. So the, the companions here, the captains of the West, are doing a lot of work because I only have three regulars there. My opponent gets one more hit. So I'm left with two regulars and um, some companions. My opponent goes down to 10 victory points. And now, um, let's see. My opponent uh, draws a character card. I guess that makes sense. They have some Palantirs that aren't so useful. I move armies into West Herondor and I continue to merge up this army in the Northwest. And then uh, my opponent attacks out of Umbar to free that army, which makes sense. And then I attack into Pilar gear and I get one hit. My opponent gets two hits, but obviously my army is bigger. I press and then they retreat and they're down to nine victory points again. So they were up to 12, managed to get them down to nine and the game continues. I don't know that I'm winning this game, <laughs> but I do have two victory points. Who knows? My opponent could roll a ridiculous number of eyes. Um, you know, is the fellowship going to make it to Mordor to destroy the ring? It seems unlikely because I'm going to have to spend resources to free strongholds to keep the game going, but 
Maybe. Um, my opponent draws dreadful spells. Obviously, that's a very useful character card. Okay, we continue. I get my second Ent. So now I have I have two Ent cards. Now I can really take out Orthanc. And I got another Rohan Mustering card that's maybe not exactly useful. My opponent allocates no eyes, rolls one. So I think, I wonder how they're doing on eyes. Yeah, they're minus two on eyes, um, which is nice. They are minus eight on sixes, though. Um, though I've been attacking them plenty. I rolled 165 combat dice at this point. They rolled 255 combat dice. Okay, so... I get this nice, nice roll. I have three attacks. And what I'd really like to do is play some Ents and destroy Saruman and Orthanc. Um, but I also need to make sure that if my opponent gets to 10 victory points, for instance, by taking Pilar Gear, that I need to be able to retake some victory points somehow. So... And I only have three attacks. So it's a little tricky for me to know exactly what to do. Um, let's see what happens. So I start by passing. My opponent merges up armies in West Herondor. That makes sense. I muster while I can into Pilar Gear and Dale. I have one Gondor regular left. I'm not exactly sure why... Um, why I'm mustering in Dale, but I guess I want this army. I guess I'm thinking about having to win the game. So if this army in the north can come and take Moria, that'd be great, or can come and take Mount Gundabad. And Dale is obviously a useful mustering point. Okay. Um, my opponent moves Nazgul around, and at this point, I bring Gandalf to Pilargir because... I basically need to hold Pilar gear. I wonder if I made a mistake by passing earlier. Why Why did I pass instead of trying to play my Ents? So if I had played my Ents, I could have killed off Saruman or have decent chances of getting three hits, killing off Saruman. And what else am I doing with those Palantirs? But now to defend Pilar gear... I need to have Gandalf down there because my thinking is got to hold it. I don't know why I'm doing this because my opponent could um, muster or bring armies from minus Morgul into West Herondor also, especially if they had moved to Nazgul there. I guess at this point, I feel like Pelargar should be able to hold against the Witch King. Yeah, either way, seems like a mistake to have not played Ents when I had two of them and had good chances of taking out Orthanc. Why, why pass? Why not, just, why not just do that? So I think that um, it's late. Like we have played, this is, this is, we're on turn 14. We've played a lot of turns, but yeah, I think, I think that just must've been a mistake to have not done that. All right, I, while I'm moving characters, I also get Strider and Boromir into Dale so that if I need to, I can attack into Woodland Realm. My opponent plays Dreadful Spells. They get two hits on Pilar Gear. And now we're at five hit points against six hit points. I have one leader, but it's close. All right, so I add my last regular to Pilar Gear. And this is a tough situation. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have tried to hold Pilar Gear again, but yeah, I think I think I have to hold Pilar Gear. That I think it's correct to have been uh, trying to defend Pilar Gear. I think the additional challenge is why not? Why wait to play the ends? P play the ends turn turn one. Don't pass. Okay, um, my opponent starts moving armies toward Pilar Gear. It's not looking good. I draw We Prove the Swifter, not particularly useful in the combat in Pilar Gear. And then my opponent uses a ring as an army movement to get everybody they need, have a giant army in West Herondor. And 
leaving us Gilead open, I might have just left one regular there, but you know, why not have a little insurance? Um, at this point, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling too confident about what to do here. If my opponent attacks, I'm going to pass. If my opponent attacks into Pelargir now, I can retreat to Asgiliath, then use my character die to attack into Minas Tirith, and then um, a ring to try and take Minas Tirith out with one, um, with one attack. And I'd have some chances of rolling a six, so, so that's okay. Um, my opponent declares an attack against Pelargir, I shine, and then they get two sixes, I only get one hit, and now I'm down to four regulars. They say press, um, but then um, they want to not do that, and so they uh, don't press. And obviously, I, I think that's the right choice for them, because um, otherwise it lets me take Minas Tirith, which, I, you know, one, I, I'd have five chances to roll one six against Minas Tirith, um, but with this, I have to, um, I have to instead, since, since they get the last action, I have to instead try and take Woodland Realm. So I bring three regulars and, um, I, you know, th this is the only, this is the only chance, this is the only chance of being able to continue the game because clearly this army is going to be able to take out Pilar gear. So, um, my opponent attacks into Pilar gear, and obviously I shine to try and keep Gandalf alive. My opponent doesn't get any hits, which is obviously better for me. I get two hits, but this army is still way bigger. It's eight hit points against four. My chances of being able to um, win this battle are so low. I might as well take my retreat now, and then I can threaten going over to minus Morgul, continue to stall the game. So my opponent moves everyone in. I don't know. I might have left one person in West Herondor, depending on what you're going to roll next turn. If you get some crazy bad roll and I manage to take Woodland Realm, maybe leave one unit. I I don't know. I guess this way you get to come over and take Dol Amroth and then win the game. Because again, Shadow is again at 10 victory points. So <laughs> it's just uh, free people have been just trying to keep Shadow off, off 10 for a long time. All right, my opponent, um, okay, so it's now my last action. I have to use my last ring. Um, oh, they're thinking how many move in. Okay, I use my last ring, and the only way to get victory points uh, back is to take Woodland Realm. So I have five um, combat strength because of Aragorn and Boromir. I have five leadership, and I have to roll two sixes. That's that's the only way to keep the game going. Um so I attack Woodland Realm. I don't really have any useful card to play here. If I had Andril still, that would have been nice. But of course, uh, it has already been used. I have no card. I My opponent has no useful card. I roll no um, sixes on my combat roll. And then I get two sixes on my leadership reroll. Uh, so the game continues. Literally, if you look at the dice down here, it's literally the last two dice are sixes. <laughs> <laughs> not that I mean I whatever the chances are the chances of rolling two sixes like it's not crazy to roll two sixes on on ten dice um but still it's sort of epic that it was the last two sixes um so things continue my opponent gets one hit um but I have now freed all of um the all of do again so this is costly it, it takes a long time for shadow to come and retake this that said my force pool is getting pretty low i have a few dwarves i have north left but like gondor has absolutely nothing elves have absolutely nothing um i need to be able to hold off shadow and also still um get to get to four victory points myself so clearly this this army in the northwest which has been very slowly creeping along and trying to merge up this is this army is going to have to do something maybe go up to mount gundabad i guess maybe go over to moria and then also free lorian while i'm at it and then also this army goes over to mordor or umbar who knows um it's really not clear to me what should happen here but um my opponent has already used a ring this round is that right um, okay, I guess they already used a ring to do something. I don't, I don't really remember, but um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe this was late and we made a mistake there. But um, they draw a card, a character card. 
I also draw a character card. And then um, now that Gandalf is not um, in Fangorn, I think I end up discarding an Ent card. Uh, no, I discard Aomer, so that's good. So I still have two Ents. I still have hopes of Gandalf coming up to Fangorn and destroying um, Saruman, but um, maybe I've missed I've missed the opportunity. My opponent, again, allocates no eyes. That's clearly correct. And they roll two this time, and I get four attacks, which is good. My opponent got seven attacks, so we'd expect them to get four and a half. They get seven, which is good. I get exactly what we'd expect, which is four. So... What are my plans here? I have to, again, keep keep um, Shadow off of the 10 victory points and ideally get to 10 myself. I need to, uh, it seems like there would be some fun chances in Umbar. Maybe I could I could come take that. Um, min minus Morgul could also be a chance. But the reality is if I start moving Gandalf, Gandalf's army towards minus Morgul, it seems like Dol Amroth is going to fall, and there's nothing that I can do to retake that. Um, I have no more Gondorian units. I don't have um, Cirdan ships. I've already used that. So uh, Dol Amroth is going to fall. What would you do here as free people? We both have, both players got pretty nice rolls. You have to continue to defend... Um, Dale from from these units. Otherwise, Shadow can go march and take. The, well, I don't know if they can go march and take the Shire. But um, what would you do here as free people? Um, so we're at minute twenty twenty one forty. Okay, uh, let's see. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> this is turn fifteen. Uh, let's see what happens. So um, I start by attacking into Minas Tirith. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It's a good way of stalling Shadow long enough. Even if they go take Dol Amroth, I can go get some other... This army in the Northwest can go get victory points somewhere, either Moria or um, Mount Gundabad. And if I retake Minas Tirith, Shadow goes down to six victory points. It'll take them a while to get um, two more strongholds back. All right, so I attack Minas Tirith. My opponent moves towards Minas Tirith. They're not going to take out Dol Amroth. They're going to come back and try and take out Gandalf. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just go take Dol Amroth and then circle back to Minas Tirith. But you do also have to defend Minas Morgul at least a little bit. Um, the fact that these units are coming from Helm's Deep. What about what about these units in, in Mordor? Like you have enough movement and you have some musters. Does Shadow have... Yes, yeah, so you have elites... You could just muster some in minus Morgul. I don't know. It's, it's it's so tricky. And also remember, this is very late. Um, we've been playing for a really long time at this point. Um, so my opponent brings some units to Fords of Eisen. Okay, so this is a cool idea. So now maybe they're coming around this way to take out Dol Amroth. And we know absolutely no more reinforcements in Gondor. So like it doesn't matter that these are open. It's just like nobody can can't muster anywhere. All right, so my opponent attacks into Minas Tirith. Oh, sorry, I attack into Minas Tirith. Right, I have to take Minas Tirith now before this army can attack me outside. So so yeah, okay, so th that makes a lot of sense because if I don't roll a six right here, then Gandalf is in trouble and this army is in trouble because Minas Tirith will hold. But I have Wizard Staff. I roll a five, way to go Wizard Staff, and my opponent does not get a hit. So that was a very pleasant pleasant play of Servant of the Secret Fire. Uh, don't usually get to use that as an effective combat card, but this was attacking into a stronghold exactly when I needed it. Way to go, Gandalf. So um, I have now gotten Shadow from 12 victory points down to six. Uh, Shadow was at the highest at 12 victory points, and now they're down to six. So that is uh, just a rare situation where you see so many swings of, of victory points. All right, and now Minas Tirith is, um, you know, with Gandalf there, that's like, that's a pretty pretty decent army. Um, and Dreadful Spells have already been played. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be hard. And also, Shadow literally has no strategy cards left. So all of these cards are just useless against Gandalf, right? None of these can be played against Gandalf. So they're just going to have to roll sixes, but 
they're going to have to try a bunch of times. Okay, I draw a character card because what else can I do with my Palantirs? Uh, sure wish that I had already played Ents. That would be nice, but so be it. Um, my opponent um, moves armies into uh, Fords of Eisen, so they're going to come around and take Dol, uh, Dol Amroth. I think that makes sense. And with uh, Gandalf safely in Minas Tirith, they, uh, they can move out of Orthanc. And this army, Fords of Eisen, plus the unit in Anphalos, will be able to take out uh, Dol Amroth pretty easily. So my opponent moves armies around, more armies. And at this point, I, um, I would really like to somehow get to four victory points while also somehow stopping my opponent from getting to um, 10. And so I think my plan here is get this army in the Northwest merged up, do something useful with it, go after Mount Gundabad, um, maybe go after Moria, who knows, um, and hold Minas Tirith, ideally, long enough. Dol Amroth is going to fall. I can see that. But maybe I can also now send a unit to um, attack in uh, to take Pilargir. So what, what did I actually do with that? Um, oh, I'm thinking. So I play We Prove the Swifter because I want to delay... I want to delay where this army is going. I think I think that's the issue. If I send, if I start sending this army to the northwest to to Mount Gundabad, my opponent will be able to defend there. If I start coming towards Moria, my opponent will will be able to defend there. So I just want to delay a little bit and um, let them commit this this army in Druwith Iyar um, down to Dol Amroth. A little bit more because maybe this army uh, in the northwest can even come as far down as Orthanc and then free up, free up Helm's Deep and Edoras. All right, so I play We Prove the Swifter, and I guess I put them in Moria because I'm thinking either I'm going to come and attack Moria, and then I'll have some good companions and that'll be great, or I'm going to go up to Mount Gundabad and then these guys can merge up with this army. It's not exactly clear. Um, if I could have reached Fangorn, maybe I could have sent somebody there. One, one, two, three, four, five, six to Fangorn. So I can't quite make it to Fangorn. If I had made it to Fangorn, then I could play Ents. Um, I guess I'm thinking, oh, if I have extra time, I can stop by Fangorn with these companions because uh, now I'm within three of Fangorn. All right. I didn't really want to draw a card because I'm so low on cards already, cards left in the deck. Um, so I play We Prove the Swifter, anticipating that this army will come to Mori at some point. So um, my opponent moves armies again. That makes sense. And now I start merge. I, this army has now finally fully merged up in the north, uh, in the northwest, and I start running with um, a regular and a leader because. This army in Dol Amroth is going to fall either way, I think, to this army in Andras. So um, might as well like make them waste an extra attack in Dol Amroth, but um, at least I end up with this extra regular that who knows if my opponent rolls something crazy, like this one regular could go sneak into Umbar, maybe, um, if they don't roll any musters next round. So my opponent gets um, regulars to Osgiliath, which is good. And then um, this army merges in, or starts coming to South Downs. And now I get, um, I retake Pilar Gear. So my opponent was at 12 and now they're down to five, five victory points. So I've managed to buy myself some time. And even if you're going, if you're going for a free people military victory, which obviously I am at this point and have been for a while, um, you still need shadow to not be too close to winning because they win the tie. If shadow gets to 10 victory points and free people gets to four victory points, shadow wins. So you, you still have to defend a bit. Um, and now in this situation, um, now I feel like I have some, I have some chances here. Um, especially if my opponent doesn't roll too many musters next round. Like this unit in Pilargir can sneak somewhere and probably I can hold Minas Tirith. Um, we'll see. All right, so my opponent attacks into Dol Amroth and um, we continue on. 
turn 16. I get rid of one extra Ent because um, I'm just not going to have a chance to play them. And if I do, for whatever, have a chance to play them, I will. I can still defeat uh, Saruman with, with a single Ent. All right, my opponent rolls three eyes this round, and I get three attacks. So my opponent gets three attacks, I get three attacks. That's um, slightly below average for both of us. Um, obviously, I'd like to win the game this round. It's relatively unlikely that they can win um, now. I mean, may maybe they could take um, they could take Dolamroth in one attack. They can take Pelargir in another attack. Minas Tirith, th a third attack, and they have a ring. So um, can they take Minas Tirith in two attacks? Can you roll two sixes or four sixes on um, 10 dice? I think it's unlikely to roll four sixes on 10 dice. Plus I have heroic death. So I feel like Shadow is unlikely to win this round. I've done what I can to defend. And um, I'm going to um, maybe be able to take out Moria. I mean, it's relatively unlikely that this army could do it. I have three attacks, but, you know, it is possible. Um, I have no quarter, so maybe. There, there are now chances for me to win this. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, and if I had ruled, my opponent says Orthanc is open for company. If I had ruled a lot of attacks, I easily uh, would have considered going down to Orthanc. One, two, three, four uh, to get to Orthanc, and then I could also free up Helm's Deep. Um, so, but I just don't have enough attacks. So I come to North, I, I move to North Dunland while I'm coming into Moria because why not remove that mustering point from shadow? And, um, and then I threaten into Umbar. I'm not sure exactly if that was worth it. My opponent has to spend a muster to defend Umbar this way. And, um... It lets them then take Pelargir with an army movement and then use the two extra units to get them into Minas Tirith. But I still think even with those two extra units, they're just they don't have any strategy cards. So I'm just not afraid of any combat cards. There's I just don't think they can roll four sixes on ten dice and even more than that because I have heroic death. So this way, what I'm doing by threatening Umbar is it makes them spend half a muster defending Umbar. And therefore, I, I effectively save a hit point in um, in Moria because they can only put a regular in Moria. So they use their muster. I think they're, they're thinking about some other things like not defending Umbar, but, um, but it's late at night and it's definitely defend Umbar and they do. So clearly, I, I think that's right. It was just like literally we've been playing for five hours or six hours or something. It's three in the morning. So um, this is exactly what I expected to happen. They have to spend one uh, muster in Umbar instead of um, having to uh, put an elite in Moria. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe I could have not done that. Um left in Pilar gear, they muster an elite in Moria, and then I threaten um, I threaten Umbar, and then they have to spend this um, muster die to, to get into Umbar, but they also have a ring, so it's just, um, I think this is the most efficient way of attacking Moria. My real goal is take Moria, get six, get six hits in Moria with this army, with this 10 hit point army. Like, it's possible. So I attack into Moria, and then my opponent uh, takes Pilar gear and merges into Minas Tirith. I think that's correct. I don't have any rings left, so now it is impossible for me to take Minas Morgul. My opponent does not have to defend Minas Morgul, so they're playing that absolutely correctly. And um, I muster into Dale because I don't know where else should I muster. Um Maybe someday I have visions of retaking Pilar gear, and then if Dale holds, now I've managed to stall Shadow even longer. Um, and my opponent takes Dol Amroth, so that makes sense. And um, let's see. Uh, oh, I want to look at my, what my last strategy card is. I draw King Brand's men, and I get rid of another Ent because just so sad, never played the Ents. 
I can't believe I didn't ever play those. That was, was definitely a mistake. And um, then my opponent attacks into Minas Tirith. And, <clears throat> you know, they're just, uh, I'm thinking about what to play. I think I, what do I play here? I think I maybe play Daylight. Okay, just to be sure, right? This is just, there's no, like, okay, whatever. They, they, they don't roll any sixes. Maybe I should have saved that for um, my attack into Moria, but um, I have enough Daylight at this point and I'm probably going to play no quarter. I also have Brave Stand that I can play up there, so might as well play Daylight here. All right, I get two hits. My opponent gets zero, and, um, you know, they were only rolling three dice on a six, so that's not crazy. And and then they press, and um, we n neither of us play any cards. My opponent gets no hits. You know, it's close to 50-50 to get a six, and I get two hits. So obviously that's not good. They just took five hit points. I took none and um, Minas Tirith is holding. But, you know, that was a hard battle. That, that was quite a hard battle to go for against Gandalf um, with no cards to play. Um, and I have plenty of cards to play. So I draw another card here. Fateful Strike. I, there's just nothing else useful to do with the Palantir because I have no rings and I have no cards that are particularly useful to play right here. Um What the heck? So that's crazy. Why didn't I play King Brand's men? That is surprising. I could have played King's Brand. Okay, so there are no more strategy cards for me to draw. Um, and I guess I feel like Dale is going to hold. So I don't even want to bother mustering there. And I'd rather have Shield Wall as a combat card. I don't know. That's weird. But okay. So I'm threatening to muster. I'm threatening to take out um, Moria. I'm waiting until my last die to do it. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess I just want to get more cards. I, maybe there are some useful cards in the character deck left that I could use in, in combat in Moria. So I guess that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking there because Dale is, Dale is going to hold against these two regulars. I don't really need more than that. Um, so might as well try and draw another character card and win right here. So if I take Moria, um, then I managed to win. Um, but my opponent uses a ring and moves Nazgul into Moria to defend it. And so maybe, maybe again, I made a mistake by waiting. Um, because now, um, I can't, I can't, like, that's a much harder battle with, with that much leadership, especially knowing that my opponent does have a bunch of character cards that they could play in battle in Moria. Um, this is now a, a very difficult fight. So instead, what I do is I move to South Athelion because my opponent now doesn't have a ring anymore. Um, <clears throat> at the start of next turn, I'm going to be able to take Minus Morgul. Obviously, um, <clears throat> They can potentially retake it. They have mustering points. But it's always great to get a stronghold without a battle if you can manage it. So this was a unit that was in Dol, Dol Amroth and has now come all the way out um, to South Athelion. Okay. Um, so uh, my opponent has nothing to do with that Palantir die. There's literally no nothing useful that they can do. They have six cards in hand. They've drawn all of their cards. Um, they have nothing useful that they can play. These are not, none of these are useful cards to play at this point. So yeah. Um, fellowship is continuing. Oh no, they can't heal anymore in Lorien. That's obviously not the direction this game is going. And this is a scary moment because I have no rings. Um, my opponent rolls, um, quite well. They get six attacks expected four and a half but I get six attacks also. So we expect me to get four. I got a little above average here. That's obviously really great for me. Um, so now um, my opponent needs to get two victory points. Maybe they can take Minas Tirith. Um, and I need to get two victory points. So think for a moment, what would, what would you do here as three people? Obviously, uh, first action, you're moving into minus Morgul with an army movement. But what's the other army movement that you're doing, if any? And how are you trying to 
defend Minas Tirith because the, this army in Dol Amroth can merge up into Minas Tirith. And then if they take out Minas Tirith, and these are wargs, so these actually get leadership against Gandalf. Um, these This army absolutely could take out Gandalf. Um, and if they do that, now they're at 10. And so where is the other, where, where the, I can't, I don't know, maybe I can come retake Edoras um, and then put them down to, back down to nine. All right, so this is what I did. Pause the video, think about it if you want. This is a very complicated situation. And we actually adjourned at this point because it was so, so, so late, turned 17. Um, so we pause, we pause the game and, um, okay, so let's see what, let's see what happens. Um, we're viewing hands and now, um, cards get messed up. So, um, these, these cards are correct at the moment, but you will see that, um, when we're playing the game again, um, as now, now we're continuing the game after the adjournment, um, my cards got messed up. And I think what happened was I have to uh, view my hand before my opponent views their hand, which we figured out when we were debugging. So I, I don't know exactly why, but um, if I viewed my hand first, then it worked. Um, okay, so what do I do? I move into um, Minus Morgul and then I come out of Dim I come out of um, Moria to Dimrald Dale. And my thinking here is, I'm at four victory points now. Um, that's great for me. I can either uh, now go take Orthanc because I have enough actions. One, two, three, four, and then five if there's a five to attack into Siege. So I have five more dice. I can attack Orthanc. Um, or if my opponent goes for Minas Tirith, then I can take um, I can retake Helm's Deep. So either way, by coming this direction, I can delay until later in the turn. If it looks like my opponent is going to take Minas Tirith and not bother trying to recapture either Dol Gold or, or Minus Morgul, then I'll take Helm's Deep and ensure that I stay at four victory points and they don't get to ten. Or if it looks like my opponent is spending uh, resources to try and either retake Minus Morgul or retake Dol Golder, then I will go take Orthanc and get up to six. So, um, <clears throat> here we go. I will, um, so that's what I do. And my opponent was not expecting that. Um, I guess they studied the, studied the game and it's just, it's a very hard situation for shadow at this point. Um, they just don't have, they just don't have enough dice to be able to defend anywhere, everywhere, particularly because I got so many attacks. If I had fewer attacks, this would be a very different situation. Um, but six attacks lets me come all the way to Orthanc and attack it this round, even if they muster into it. And this army, which started, uh, we got some dwarves all the way from Erdluin um, into Dimrald Dale. Um, okay, so my opponent starts moving armies and they're going to come try and retake it, I can't quite tell yet, and I think this is smart of them. Are they trying to um, take Minas Tirith and get to 10 victory points? Or are they going to try and take Minas, Minas Morgul? They can't do both because it takes um, basically one, two, three, four more actions to attack um, into Minas Tirith. And it takes one, two more actions to attack into Minas Morgul. And they only have five attacks left. So either at some point they're going to have to choose: do they try and get ten victory points, or do they try and get um, uh, take me off of four? So I'm going to delay as long as I can that choice. All right, I pass. My opponent um, wastes their palantir die, which is correct because there's nothing to do with it, um, and they want they also want to delay. So that's correct. I move into Parth Celebrant. My opponent merges armies into Gorgoroth and Pelargir, again delaying their choice, and. Um, then, yeah, they're like, okay, use their army die, that's fine. And then I move into Fangorn because I need to just keep my options open. I don't know exactly what my opponent's going to do yet. And then they muster into Orthanc, which um, by mustering into Orthanc, they're kind of committing to the defense strategy because now they have one, two, three attack dice left. They could maybe still take Minas Tirith. Um, they're not 100% decided on that yet. Um, but they muster into Orthanc and, um, I move into Fords of Eisen and then we see what they do. So they muster again 
into Orthanc. Uh, wait, no, no. They attack. Um, they attack minus Morgul. So by attacking minus Morgul, um, I know for sure that this army in Pelargir cannot um, cannot make it to Minas Tirith. And so while they could theoretically attack with this army into Minas Tirith um, and roll four sixes, um, obviously chances of that are extremely low. And on top of that, I have Heroic Death. I have Brave Stand. Um, so I have a lot of options. Um, their plan, which is obviously hard to do, um, but their plan is to uh, retake Minus Morgul and hold Orthanc. So I attack into Orthanc because um, I believe that Minas Tirith is going to hold. And I leave one unit behind in Helm's Deep because um, I don't think that one regular is going to matter. If for some reason they attack Minas Tirith on this action and roll four sixes, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm leaving that regular there. Uh, it seems like the game is going to end this round. Um no, I guess I leave that regular there because if um, they manage to retake minus Morgul, but I don't take Orthanc, then they don't win either, and I don't win. Um, and at least now this regular can march into Helm's Deep more efficiently, and maybe eventually I can take Orthanc next round. So, um, so that's my thinking. That's my thinking with that. I don't really need that extra regular. And it leaves me options for next round just in case the battle in Orthanc goes very badly. Though my chances of rolling at least one six, because I have both uh, Nameless Wood for round one of combat and No Quarter for round two of combat, all I need is a single six on 20 dice. Um, so my my chances of taking Orthanc are very high. Um, okay. So my opponent attacks minus Morgul. Now, this is the point at which I look at my cards and I'm like, wait a second, my cards are messed up. If I had seen Heroic Death here, while they're attacking into minus Morgul, I probably would have played it because um, another way of me winning this game is simply holding minus Morgul. Um, so yeah, I, I think I would have done that, but my cards were messed up and I did, what I was seeing, I didn't have Heroic Death in my hand, so I didn't play it and I didn't realize it until, um, until a little later. Um, okay, but whatever, they got a six, so they managed to retake minus Morgul. And um, now for me to win the game, uh, I have to take Orthanc and I just realized that my cards are messed up. Okay, that's fine. Um, this one, I say, does this look like um, we prove the Swifter to you? Because at the moment it was looking to me like it was we prove the Swifter, but we know that we've already, I've already played we prove the Swifter to get Strider and Bormir to uh, Mornon. So um, the actual card was House of Stewards, but it was looking like we proved the Swifter to you. My opponent, uh, to me, my opponent notices, like, I can't see that. That's a face down card. Um, whatever. My opponent asks, hey, do you have an Ent? Yes, I had an Ent. Um, and then I end up playing some random character card in my hand um, to represent that it was an Ent. Um, I didn't I didn't pick properly because I couldn't see my cards. Obviously, this is the Ent card that I had in my hand that I was going to play. Um, so that's effectively the card that I played. And then I get a six and, um, then, uh, Orthanc goes and, um, that's it. My opponent could theoretically roll four sixes in Minas Tirith, but I did save the heroic death, um, for that. Um, I also had King Brand's men as shield wall. So even if I had played the heroic death in Minas Morgul, um, I still would have had shield wall in Minas Tirith. So there's no way my opponent could have taken Minas Tirith, and that's why I would have played Heroic Death in Minas Morgul. So that is the game. Um, what a crazy, crazy game. Uh, let me show you the statistics. Um, so um, in the end, my opponent was minus nine on sixes. Obviously, that helped me uh, significantly in surviving some of the combats. Um, I was minus six on wills and minus six on characters. So this definitely slowed me down a lot. Um, who knows, did the luck balance out or not? Um, all of these plus 13 on fives um, actually mattered quite a lot in this game because I was attacking them. I rolled, uh, sorry, we should remember, uh, because of a bug, these are reversed. So this is, um, this is shadow, um, and, and this is free people. Um, I rolled though 204 combat dice. So I was doing a whole bunch of combat, 
Um, and so these fives actually probably mattered quite a bit um, in, in a variety of my attacks. So what an epic, epic, crazy game. Um, I think that to me, the lesson of this is um, if you're playing free people and things go poorly, remember I had quite a few turns early on where I didn't roll any movement. Um, if things are going poorly, um, just stir up military trouble right if you can if you can stir up military trouble then you can stall the game and stall the game and if you're going to lose the game because shadow is at 10 victory points just stop shadow you don't need to have a whole plan for winning i had no idea that i was going to win the game by taking or thank like i had no idea like this army marched from erdwin all the way around dimmeldale stopped by fangorn like ended up in orthank like who know who knew that like i definitely did not predict that and i think when you're playing as free people you don't need to know all that at the beginning uh when you're starting your attacks all you need to know is i'm going to stop shadow from winning and i'm going to look for the opportunities that come up um you know, I thought I was going to take Moria, and then I ended up in Minus Morgul, and then they retook Minus Morgul, and I ended up in Northang. Like, who? crazy. Just what a what an incredible game. Um, certainly, there were some mistakes. I absolutely should have played Ents when I had the chance to play Ents after holding them for the whole game. Still didn't play them. I don't know why, looking at that now. Um, and, you know, and maybe there were some, some inefficiencies with um, ring usage, or I, I don't know what, but... Th- this was an epic game. Um, thank you very much to my opponent, Strider656, for just a great game, great sportsmanship. Um, and I look forward to getting to play again in the future. And uh, for me, at least, this is the end of the 2022 tournament. For anybody who makes the top cut, um, congratulations on that. And uh, we'll continue in the top cut uh, later. I mentioned this at the beginning of the part one. I'll mention this now at the end of part two. I am been working on a solo variant for um, for War of the Ring. If you have Java client and you're on Discord and you'd like to try it out, uh, please feel free to get in touch with me on Discord. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good rest of the day.